Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got something interesting. I talked with Carl Storch reps and they told me that one of their devices is going out of service. And I asked them, are you guys going to get me the software? Because only Carl Storch guys can install software on these guys. And they said, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, we'll get back to you on that. Okay. And what I'm talking about is these guys right here. That is a Carl Stortz HD Connect video recorder. It's normally a very reliable unit, but if Carl Stortz isn't going to support it anymore, what are we going to do? Not follow the rules, you know that. Stay tuned, right here on Better Biomed. This is the Carl Stortz HD Connect video recorder. You can see it's got a USB on the front, it's got a CD slash DVD recorder, and it's got a touch screen. Very simple device. And on the back, what do we have? A whole bunch of video inputs and a few outputs. Some accessory ports, and this is your serial slash touch screen slash touch screen power. It's actually kind of a simple device. They really don't break down that often. But what they do is they have hard drive problems. Some of these have Windows XP, if I remember correctly, and some of them on the newer software revisions have Windows 7. But the problem with this stupid device, even though I love them so much, is that this device will sometimes have Windows errors or it will have touchscreen driver problems. And Carl Stortz will not sell me the software for this device. So what do we do? You can't get the software. We've got a whole bunch of these in the field. And Carl Stortz is already starting to highly suggest that it's the end of their service life. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This is a hypothetical for you guys out there. This goes for all sorts of medical equipment. And you've seen me do it to the Cerner CE for a very similar reason. You buy the device and the software, embedded version of the software is actually part of the device. All right, so if you own the device, you technically own a licensed copy of the software, right? And luckily the hardware between these devices is very similar. But with this device, you have to make sure to go into the options and make sure that the software revision is very similar to a donor unit because we are gonna use this guy right here this is a USB to SATA and PETA parallel adapter which allows your hard drive from this device to appear like it's just a raw drive on a laptop what you do is you take that drive and you do uh, the same software that I used in the Cerner CE, which is a raw hard drive copy. I'll put a link in the description down below. But you go in there and you make an image of this hard drive and then you copy it to another hard drive. You just have to make sure that the installed Carl Storch software is very similar in versions. Because if you have one that's version 7, which is extremely old, and you got a new version that's like 14 and later, well, then you're going to have some problems. Because when Carl Storz comes out and they reflash this guy, they also are, they're not just installing Windows and the Carl Storz software. What they're also doing is they're reflashing the video processor or the video card. Something I've never even considered before. And I've experienced this uh, once before when I tried experimenting with one of these units, flashing uh, from one version of Carl Stortz to another. And this was with some really old software revisions. It was like version 7 to version 2 or something like that. And during a lot of those early versions, they did a lot of hardware flashes to those video cards. 
and the result is the copied hard drive would crash. It would every time you boot it up, it would crash. But if you have reasonably close and reasonably relevant software on these things, then you can copy the hard drive from a donor unit, one that's properly working. You create an image and then you burn it to this hard drive right here. And the reason that we use the hard drive raw copy program is because OEMs like to have dead sectors or directory structures that are basically invisible to like the FAT system. So if you go into like MS-DOS or you go into Windows and you copy all the stuff from a hard drive over, you didn't do a raw copy because there's raw information that's embedded into the drive that you're not copying. Well, with this plan right here of using this USB adapter and using the raw hard drive copying program and making an image, then burning the image, you are copying bit for bit, byte for byte, every single piece of the hard drive from one to the next. Now you might be asking, what are the downsides of doing this? There's only really one downside that I found, and that is if this one here has a serial number of XYZ and I copy this hard drive to another unit, well then the another unit is going to think it's hard drive XYZ. It doesn't really affect you. It doesn't affect anything really because all it is is the sticker on the back doesn't match what's in the software. As long as the sticker on the back is still there, you still know the unit's serial number so your database isn't going to be messed up. And technically you couldn't really get it for software piracy because if you think about it, you own the device, you own a licensed copy of software because you can't buy one without the other. Carl Storch won't sell us the software. They won't give us the rights or the ability to burn uh, software back to the unit if it develops a Windows error, which anybody that's owned a Windows XP system or a Windows 7 system, randomly one day you boot it up, especially when they get old, and it'll eventually have a Windows error. It just happens. So it's imperative that we be able to restore the software on our units, or let's say you have a hard drive failure. I've actually had this a couple times. If you have a hard drive failure, you go to boot the unit up and the hard drive is normally on its side inside the unit. If you go to boot that unit up and it won't read the hard drive, you orient the hard drive 90 degrees to what it was and the bearings inside will magically start working and it will spin up. It's the weirdest thing. But if it's got a lot of wear and tear when the hard drive is oriented in this direction, then you rotate it this way. And if it's rotated this way and it's not booting up, you rotate it this way. And very often that hard drive will boot up. And once you get it booted up and spun up, that's when you can rip a copy of it. So guys, if you have a hard drive error on your unit, replace the hard drive, burn a copy. Remember, it's got to be equal or larger sized. That's the only prerequisite. Make sure that the hard drive is equal size or larger and make a copy, test it out. I'm not saying go ahead and use that unit on a patient. I'm not saying that at all. You could, that's up to you. And I'm not saying you should go and burn a bunch of versions of software and sell it. Not at all. I'm saying if you own multiple devices and they have a software on there, you could experiment with copying software from one unit to the other as long as you do a raw copy. So that's the FYI for today. Hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching.